So when I was 13 years old, I said, I want to be the best dog trainer in the world. I was in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico. And I come from a low-income family. And my mom was taking me to, to, uh, to, a, to a competition. And I turned around and I told my mom, mom, you think I could be the best dog trainer in the world? And my mom turned around and said, you can be whatever you want. Hi, welcome to Really Famous. I'm your host, Kara Mayer Robinson, and you know me, I'm all about getting to know the real person behind the fame. Because, you know, I was a therapist, so that's just sort of how it goes. Today, I'm so happy to bring you a brand new talk with Caesar Milan, aka the Dog Whisperer. We first met up in 2018 when he was on tour doing live shows and I met him at his hotel in New Jersey and we sat down for hours talking about his fascinating journey from rural Mexico where he grew up to the United States and how he became such a huge success. You can listen to that talk very easily. I put a link in this episode's show notes. Today, Caesar is back on the show and we get even more personal about his life now, his family, his hopes and dreams, regrets, how he became a U.S. citizen, what he's learning from women, and more. Plus, he gives me a tip for dealing with my dog's occasional thieving of the contents of our kitchen garbage can. He also talks about his new TV show, which he's filming now, and his new Halo system that helps teach your dog boundaries. Caesar and I taped this talk over Zoom, so you can watch us too. I have a few videos up on my YouTube channel, which you'll find at youtube.com slash really famous. And remember to tap that red subscribe button and also the notifications bell, so you know when I drop a new video, which is about once or twice a week. And please check out my new Amazon storefront where you'll find the very best products for your dog. I sifted through hundreds of products and pulled out what I think you'll love. Just go to amazon.com slash shop slash really famous or click the link in today's podcast notes and you'll see all the best dog goodies, including Caesar Milan's dog training books and tools, a four-star best friend's calming dog bed, which has more than 20,000 ratings and rave reviews, an HD Wi-Fi dog camera that can toss treats to your dog when you feel like it, and a special de-shedding comb called the Furminator that I cannot rave about enough. I use it with my dog, Stella, when she's in full-on shed all over the house mode. So those are just a few examples of what I pulled aside for you. And I have even more goodies there, not just dog products, like free trials for streaming TV and books written by my really famous guests. It's super easy to shop for what you need. Plus, Amazon is safe and secure. And when you shop through my storefront, you support Really Famous. So thank you for that. Shop now at Amazon.com slash shop slash Really Famous. And now, Caesar Milan. Oh, wait, one more thing. Uh, Caesar's phone rings a bunch of times, just so you know. Hello. Hi, Caesar. (laughs) Do you hear me? Excellent. I I was trying to do it through the uh, through the computer, but it didn't work out. How are you? Really good. Really, really, really good. Walked the dogs, went to the gym. We're good. We're starting out. We're starting to shoot the new show uh, next Monday. So I'm super, super, super um, happy about that. So what's the new show exactly? Well, it's going to be shot at the ranch. And, you know, I always say I, 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 I train people, rehabilitate dogs. This time, I'm going to bring them into my ranch and utilize the whole entire ranch for people to get, like, physically uh, healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally stable so what, I, what we're going to do in the ranch is show people how by you understanding how to utilize the environment how understanding how to work as a team and having the right formula rituals and symbols you can align your whole entire family animals are are just instinctual spiritual 
and, and emotional, right? We are the only species that follow unstable leaders. So that means human is, is not only being unstable, but also following instability. In the animal world, that would never happen. So if you are an unstable, an unstable member, you can never say, I would like to run for a president. Never. Right, right. The pack would not follow you, right? Nobody, or maybe it would like one, maybe one dog would follow. I don't know. No, 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 no. Nobody. Listen, no in dogs. the animal world, in the animal world, if you if you're born unhealthy, you won't make it. So if you if your genes are unhealthy, the pack will immediately remove you. So that's just your genes. If your energy is unhealthy, the pack would attack you. So, so just to, yeah. So like, I mean, just to bring it to like current events. So there are people following the unstable leader, right? But there are also people, I mean, there are people who are rejecting the unstable leader and like leaving that leader alone. But yet there's also a pack of people who are not doing that. But you're just saying that's humans, right? That's humans. They're not dogs. Dogs, different only rules. Human. What I'm saying yeah. is only humans because- Elephants don't follow unstable female elephants. And the, and the uh, elephant world is the female who's the pack leader. Yes. Until now, in society, after, you know, for the past 40 years, uh, a female woman is, is being, in a way, allowed to run for president. Do you know what I mean? That's like a new thing. Well, in the animal world, it's been forever. So it doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. What matter who's the most stable? That's the one is going to lead the pack. So the elephants, what 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 they show us is that it has nothing to do with gender. It has to do with energy. If animals can talk and have their own news, they will be like looking at the debates and look at it with red. It's like, why are they talking? Their energy is off. They, sh- they shouldn't be talking because no good outcome will come if two people have the wrong energy. You see, so a lion will never debate with, a, with an unstable rhino because the rest of the animal kingdom would not allow anyone to be unstable for a conversation. <laughs> this, they're, talking yeah. about, they're talking about the safety, the peace, and the love of a nation. So <laughs> that's a big deal. You know what I mean? Just that the, the, the layer of where we're gonna stand if we have an unstable leader, safety gets immediately injured. Peace right after. You don't feel the love because you're so worried about not feeling safe and peace. It's not you good. It's not good. I, mean? I know. You need to bring everybody. Like, I think you need to bring all of America, at least, to the Dog Psychology Center, right? Well, that's what the show is going to be about. Is so in it? A way, yeah, so, so it's about, you know, it's about bringing people different, obviously different races, it, it, it's uh, different uh, uh, looks. But at the, at the end of the day is uh, we all, at one point, we develop instability. And we need to go back. We need to go back to natural, simple, profound, which is where your stability lives. You know, when you, when you don't think your, yourself as money, fame, and power, is that's not what you are about to do. So my, my goal to the world, especially right now with COVID and, you know, and the uncertainty that, that this virus brings to the whole world is you, you have to at least have a moment of your life where you only practice calm, confident, love, and joy, because that's a healing source of energy. I think that's good for dogs and humans, really. Like I know that the that whatever the human does is what the dog picks up on, but I also feel like just other people pick up on that too. You know, if you're gonna give that off, then other people are gonna feel that from you too. So I feel like that's just good advice across the board. Now, question for you. Do you remember that we talked another time a long time ago? Do you remember our talk? It was at the hotel you were in in Hoboken. You were doing a live show in New Jersey. You were in the, I think it was the W, I want to say. And I came to your room and your dogs were with you. And we sat in your room in like the sweet area with the couch for a couple of hours. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, look, yes. Yes, you told me everything about your whole journey from Mexico mm -hmm. to the U.S. And like, yes. I have to tell you. So again, I don't know if you really remember it or not. But yes, I, I do. Yes, I, I, yes, but you describe exactly the whole thing. So yes. So I have to tell you that on my show, your episode is one of the all-time favorites by people. Mm. They love it. I mean, it's still today. So it's probably, I want to say, two and a half years ago that we did that. Yeah. But I can't even tell you the feedback that I've had about our talk. Like, people are so inspired by your whole story and mm. your energy and your... Also, I bring you up a lot in when people ask me, like... You know, what, do you, what all these successful people you talk to, like, what's the common ground? Da, 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 da. And for me, I bring up you a lot because you saw what you wanted. I mean, when you were little and you were in Mexico, you were like, I want to be like the most famous dog trainer. I want to be on TV. I want to go to Hollywood. And I have to say, like, it just has a major impact on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for that. And I think mm -hmm. it's really, I just wanted you to know how, how many people you've moved. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, everybody has dreams, right? Everybody yeah. has dreams. I think that I think the dreams are, are fuel when your faith, your passion and your hard work uh, is is utilized because you can't just dream without the movement. Right. And so that you just you just saying, I, I, I want to turn on the highest level of faith. I want to turn on the highest level of passion and I'm going to work super hard. Right. And that's what it takes. It's not just to dream about it, but just to make it real. Right. You took those steps and they were hard steps. I mean, all the times that you tried to cross the border. Yeah. Unreal. You could have just given up, but you didn't. You were like, okay, I'm just going to keep trying and trying and keep doing yeah. it. And you were like, going to do it. Yeah. And you kept going. So it's like that yeah. persistence, right? The steps, the action and not yeah. giving up. Key. Yeah. So, you know what I tell my kids, what I tell my, cause I have a 25 and 21 and I, I, I want to make sure that they live to the fullest. You know what I mean? There's no need to be an American citizen and not live to the fullest. Okay. It's just, it's a privilege. It's a blessing. It's, it's an opportunity to say I am born in a place where possibilities are endless you know, so for, for me, it's like, I just want to make sure that, that you have this feeling of live or die, but you have to live, you know, so that's, that, that, it's at that level. Yeah, yeah. It's at that, so it's, it's at that level. How do you do that? Well, you take care of yourself, you take care of animals, you take care of others, and you teach good. Do you feel like you have that same desire yeah. to like do all the things that you did back then now? I'm about to change the world again with this new show. I'm about, I'm a, I'm about to reveal uh, uh, the simplicity behind being happy with a dog. <laughs> so for me, that's going to change humanity, especially right now with COVID and, and the unemployment and, and all and all in this this surface of racism, right? So you're living like a human practice a hateful behavior. This doesn't this no animal will ever practice racism. None. They don't dislike the lion because it has a mane. They don't dislike the uh, the zebra because it has stripes. That's yeah, not no, no, that's no. not that doesn't happen. In this world of racism, unemployment, and COVID. We need the simple, natural, profound lifestyle. So I'm, I'm about to change the world. Well, good. I hope you do. And if anybody can, it's you. So how is that going to work out with all of the, the precautions for COVID? Well, it's, it's outdoors. It's at the ranch. It's naturally social distance. It, it, it's social distance. I want people to learn this thing. Social distance in the animal world is normal. When, when, uh, when a cat and a horse meet for the first time, they don't do intimate thing. They do distance because they need to make sure, do I trust you at a distance? Do you respect me at a distance? Can we be then get closer and practice affection? But the first thing is trust, respect. Trust, respect is what we're calling social distance. So when dog people uh, 
uh, you know, did this behavior, hey, now you can because the COVID doesn't let you. And so right now dogs are actually, oh, <laughs> it's the best time for dogs. <laughs> it is the best time. Their owners are also home all the time or more, right? I mean, right. How many, I think more people are bringing their dogs out. At least, I mean, I walk my dog for a super long walk pretty much every day. But once we were kind of trapped at home, we would also take her out in the evening for like a second walk. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, there's a sacrifice, but at least that's one of the upsides for dogs. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, today, this morning, I said, I, um, I want to do a walk challenge. I told my team, let's, let's create a walk challenge. This is two kinds of walk. You can walk one hour away from home and then come back, and you know, so that would be uh, two hours. Or you can ask uh, a family member to drop you off two hours away from home and find your way back. That one is going to be super fun. Oh, that's fun. Yes, because it's, it, it's like you, you, you enter into this uh, going back home. That's the goal, you know? And so you're, everything about you goes into being creative, saving energy, because they have to drop you away. You can use your GPS if you want to, right? So that's perfect time to use technology to guide you back home. If you do that, if you do that route for three, four days, you don't need the GPAs on the, on the number four day. Your dog will bring you back. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, that's so yes, cool. That's yes. how they train service dogs. Okay. So, yeah, so, so if you do that, you actually are challenging your dog at a level where the dog said, oh my God, how fun it was to get lost. <laughs> and we, we came back together. You know, we survived. I'm thirsty and I'm hungry and I want to rest. And so then you gave him food, water, resting, home. That's like that, that to a dog is, is like a good birthday party. So I have to tell you, you seem to be very upbeat and feeling good and in good spirits. And I know that's yeah. your, you know, your personality and your outlook, like you've talked about before, but like, have you been feeling good? Like, are you feeling better? Cause you're about to start filming again. Like how have you been handling the whole i don't know everything that's been going on recently like well, emotionally listen, how a, have you helped i'm a high it? level energy human being so i remember by the way your mother had a hard time with all of your energy right when you yes, were little yeah that's what they put me in judo uh, it, so so because i understand that part of me so this is the part that you have to understand about yourself so so, so this in the in the human world you have three three kinds of humans you have low level energy humans medium level high level so it's not what is happening in front of you that is going to bother you. It's what do you do with your energy? So once you recognize that you're high level energy, you just have to make sure that you, that you keep yourself busy. Right? So, so you've been busy. What, the, what I do every single day, I just make sure I drain my energy, my energy from my body, my energy from my mind, my energy from my heart. So when I go to sleep, it doesn't affect me. I need to recover. You know what I mean? Remember, dogs or animals do that every day. So if it's COVID or not COVID, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just a lifestyle. So I, I, I practice. I grew up in a farm. So I grew up waking up at five in the morning. I grew up, you know, being at service. I grew up being, you know, part of the pack. I grew up making sure that I, that I, that I do something physically, mentally, and, and emotionally. You know what I mean? Not for money. It's just for the, better, for the benefit of the pack. So I have that habit. Yeah. How's your family doing now? Really good. Really, yeah. Really. I'm, it's a blessing. You know, it's, I tell my kids every day, it's like this and this is a blessing. I always remind them, listen, I come from Mexico. I come from poverty. I, it's, not, it's not that I'm, I'm trying to I feel bad about it. No, no, no. I just, I just want you to know that you have to be grateful. You have to be grateful because this is a, a big opportunity that, that, uh, that we have. You know, just to be alive. Your grandparents are good. Don't forget to think about that. Don't just play Xbox and PlayStation, you know, like be grateful. Practice that. Make sure that you plug into that world and say thank you to God or the universe, whatever you want to believe. I don't care. Just say thank you. You know what I mean? Don't take it for granted. Yeah, yeah. I really think gratitude has a big impact. 
Now, last yeah. time we talked, you told me all about the Haida. Are you still together? Is that? Yes. 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 Well, you know, the Haida has been the uh, portal of me learning about uh, a woman. Right. So, so one thing I was actually, I was talking to her before she left to the gym. They say, I, I say, you know, in Mexico, I learned how to be completely transparent and completely free and in a way naked and metaphor with animals. But when, when I went into me as a man with a woman, I learned, I learned um, what, what Mexicans teach men about women is a culture. You know, so so it is. It um, it affected me, but we, with her, I am able to to learn and discover what I teach people to learn and discover with dogs. You know what I mean? So what do you mean? What were you bringing? What were you bringing about it from your background In, that was different? Insecurity, um, frustration of um, communication, not understanding women. It's a different species. You know what I mean? You got your girls function different, and you got your source is 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 emotions first. My source is instincts first as a male, and I was told to do it. You see, so if I don't see that when I'm little, if I don't see my grandfather, my dad, my country, my fellow men, when I was when I'm little, uh, be sensitive, be thoughtful, be gentle, be kind be loving, all this incredible energy. Listen, in the, in the dog world, you have to start with calmness. With a woman, you have to start with a whole bunch of more. Not only the calmness, but the gentle, the, the, the thoughtfulness, you know, this, the, the sense of all these things that makes a lot of sense because, because you guys are sensitive, uh, intuitive. Um, you are willing to give life do you know what I mean? So that's just uh, God-like, God-like behavior, you know? So if you I like don't, that. Yeah, I like yeah, that, that description. Right. Yeah, uh-huh. Mother Earth. So, uh-huh. so, uh, so that automatically is going to now, now uh, make you feel respected as a female because mankind has taught other men not to be at that level of sensitivity and respect. Yeah, it's like the message. It's like the underlying message. So that's interesting. So how did you, so you ran into some little stumbling blocks and then she taught you what happened? No, I mean, this is obviously it's the love that I have for this particular woman that made me uh, become surrender. So no man on earth will ever ever learn if he doesn't achieve come surrender. You, you won't be able to, to be sensitive, to detect, to feel, uh, to do not even think about saying, how do you feel? You should know how she feels. You know what I mean? So is that possible? Yes, because I can do it with an emu. I can do it with a horse. I can do it with a kangaroo. I can do it with a pack of dogs. I know how everybody feels. I don't ask animals how they feel. I just know how they feel. see it. So I have that capability. So I can tell mankind, guys, we have it. We just have to be nurturing. Our parents need to nurture that sensitivity. We have it. You're born with it. You as a male, eventually you learn that you have a feminine side. What that means is you have a sensitivity. You see it? It has this data. doesn't mean you are a female. It's just a, a power inside of like a female can have a male side. Right. So you see that she can be masculine or she can be feminine. Obviously, a female is expected to be feminine. But can a female be a leader? Leader means direction protection. So that's where you got to get put a little bit more of the masculine energy without losing your feminine aura. You understand? Yes. She taught you a lot, it sounds like, because you weren't really thinking about this she before, triggered. right? She triggered it. She, she triggered yeah. it. And yes. then you decided, she, though, that you were like, you weren't just, so she triggered it, and you were like, I need to learn more about this. So that's very interesting. Yes, because I love her. You can only change if you love something. I'll tell you one thing. My clients, I said, would you change for your husband? And my client would say, 80% of my clients are women, 80%. So I said, would you, would you change for your husband? Like you would do more exercise and you would change your positivity and no. What about for your kids? No. 
What about for your dog? Yes. <laughs> Why? Why oh, a female? Why a female human will say yes to a dog? Because the dog represents unconditional love. So my point to this is if you love someone or if you love yourself, you will change. You will. You will. It will trigger uh, for you to discover and reconnect and go back to your true self. Because none of what, what, I'm, what I'm saying, she taught me, is just trigger it, the opening. And it happened naturally. Gonna, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to teach you instincts. I'm just going to trigger Got it. I'm not gonna treat. I'm not gonna teach you a spirituality. I'm just gonna open it. I'm right. not gonna teach you how to love. I'm just gonna open it to the full potential. So, but, okay. So you said eighty percent of your clients are women, right? So who are your clients? Like, what are they clients for? For bringing like dogs to you to help figure out what the issue is with the dog? Like, is that what you're talking about when you talk about clients? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My, I'm, business, right. my business is educating humans, right? Yeah. So, right. so what kind of, what do you have? Males, females, what's the ratio, right? So it's like ratings, who follows you? So who follows me? 80% of the people that follow me are women. Oh, so why is that sense. then? Oh, it does. It's very, very simple. Very, very simple. Women work in relationship right away. That's it. Rela- right away. Right away. That's everything. <laughs> you see it? So, so obviously the person who is pack oriented for nature, she's going to, I got to work on the religion. It's my family. So what if I go to work if my family is not doing well? So what? That, that, that would be. It. So did your, did your relationship improve after you started to figure these things out? Did you see it actually get better? Yeah, because I am understanding the moments I, I created this connection. All right. Can we talk about your career for a minute? Like your whole trajectory of your career. And now you Mm -hmm. have a new show and now you have Halo. So it's like, you're always doing things, right? You always seem to have projects going on. So I feel like that's just who you are and just what you're driven to do. Right. Yes. What are some of the ups and downs? The ups and downs is going to be your lack of awareness is going to, is going to make it down. You know, because this is my first life that I experienced as a season of Milan, you know, so I never done this before. So everything that I'm doing is new. Even the people that I do business with is new, you know, and not everybody live by the moral code. So you're going to have humans who are not going to live in the honest integrity loyalty, but you are. That's going to put you down. You know what I mean? You're going to, there's going to be time, moments in your life that you are not living by the moral code. And you need to realize that, you know what I mean? And that hurts a lot because that's not what you, especially now for me, my intention is never to create pain or hurt or discomfort. If I do it, it's an unconscious moment. So that, 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 that it, personally, uh, as a human being, I don't like, be, that's the one I like the least. Of course, I don't want humans who are dishonest and like they to hurt me either. You know what I mean? But but I can I can brush them away quicker than I can brush my failures. Right, right, right. So what are some it's, of your failures that you feel? Well, the the what I'm you know, I'm 51, so I'm not so hard on myself anymore. Um, um, first of all, is it's not uh, something that I chose. You know, first, first, you know, first of all, so when I, when I make a mistake or when something happens and there is, it's not a choice, you know, so you got to, yeah, because you can, when people recognize their mistakes, they're, they're, we have a tendency to try to create punishment or, 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 or create justice or, or like make sure we wash it out in some shape or form, Right. Because that's what we've been told. You know, you did wrong, you have to pay for the wrong, but like, not if it's an unconscious thing. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like, I didn't want it to, I didn't want it to inherit this energy or this behavior or this habit. That was not my choice. So if you had me when I was a kid, I would never choose the, the trade with negativity. I would be the kid that we all as a kid would choose the positivity. You know, it's two trade, one has poison, the other one doesn't. You choose when the other one don't poison. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we have to be very careful on, on, on that. I just, something because I, I'm going through it and 
And sometimes you get stuck. You get stuck with the, uh, why would I did that? Why would I do that? Um, and, and, and just doesn't, you, you get caught up into this guilt, into this uh, feeling f- failure, frustrated, angry. Um, all of those places that you have learned to go. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. Anger is, is, a, is a behavior that you learn. You didn't born with it. You know, failure is a behavior that you learn. You didn't born with it. Guilt is a behavior that you learn. You didn't born with it. You know, but it has been given to society so it can be manipulated. So, you know what I'm saying? So they're giving you all these things. So, of course, you're going to have bad moments and it's going to be hard to move up. Animals have bad moments, but they don't stay there too long. And that's exactly what I like. I'm trying to do now that I'm 51. When you have a bad moment, you try to just feel it and then move on rather than settle into it. Is that what you mean? No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to settle into it. I'm just not going to live there for three days, four days, five days, two weeks, uh-huh. three weeks, a month, two months. So what are some of the things that'll set you off and put you in a bad moment? What are some, like, some examples? Well, they're, they're less and less and less because I've been working on it for a while now, you know, it's, uh, for actually since I met Jahaira. So That's for, great. For the past, That's awesome. For the past 10 years, it's like, you know, uh, uh, people write me all the time on in, in Instagram or uh, YouTube and says, you know, my life has changed since I started watching the show. You know, my relationship with my dog has changed. I follow trust, respect, love, exercise, discipline, and affection. So Jahaira has done that for me. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, but again, it's, it's because it's so much love right? And so much comes open-minded that I can be influenced by that. Yeah. Yeah. You know so, what I mean? So, yeah, she has definitely, but you have, I mean, she was like the motivation and she yeah. was like the, the trigger, the stimulus, but then you did yes. the work to right. figure it out. So that's, that's, that's important. Correct. And so it, it's clear that you just learned a lot and you're using it. Yeah. But, but when you look back, what are some, do you have any regrets still? Like, do you have any life regrets that you look back and you're like, uh, if only I had, or I wish I did, or I wish I didn't, what would it be? Ooh. Every once in a while, it does, it does, it does come. It's one, only one of all of them. Um, that is definitely a, like I would have loved to assess and evaluate better. Just one, it's just one that uh, that could have be prevented if I would have used my instincts in uh, assessment and evaluation. You know, like evaluating a person. Oh, uh, a as person. Energy first. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, because that 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 could be that could be bad. You know what I mean? That, so you you can enter into a relationship with someone that is not compatible, that is not compatible, energetically it's not compatible. So if you go beyond that, and then you can enter into a place that could be prevented. Are we talking about the cat person, your ex-wife? You told yeah. me she was a cat yeah. person and you should have known yeah. all along because she was a cat person. Last, you know, but of course, you know, the part with having my kids is like, yeah, I, I definitely, definitely uh, enjoy that part of, of having two incredible beings to to share my knowledge and and at, and at, at, at the same time also to recognize you know the part of me they they also taught them what i learned in mexico the good and the bad so you know they're they're definitely my teachers of recognizing me because you see you and your kids you know what i mean and i never made a mistake with a dog but but I raised dogs since I was little. Like I know I have experience since I was five years old, three years old. For you can't be uh, uh, in charge of a child when you're five, and it, you know and if you are, it's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> but you can definitely be in charge of a dog or a cat or a, or a or a chicken or a goat. That gives you like confidence. Like yeah, my grandpa would say, "You take care of the goat." I will feel really proud of myself. I forgot to ask you last time. Also, we didn't get to it. So how did your whole citizenship happen? Like you, you're a U.S. citizen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, how did, the, when, and how did that happen? That's what out of that marriage. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so being, you know, I, 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 was, I, was, I, was, I was in that marriage for 16 years. And, um, 
And after 10 years being married uh, with an American citizen, you can apply. Yeah. But so, oh, got it, right, I didn't right. marry for the papers, I promise. Yes, I believe you. I totally believe you. You would never go for that easy way. No, no, no way. No, 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 um, no but way. that was another benefit, right? So even, even things that maybe would be regrets, still, there are good things that come out of them. Obviously, your kids, your yeah, citizenship, I mean, you, you can get and you papers learn a in lot. a different way. I could get papers in a different way. Right, so, you know, right. I mean, I, that's, I mean, I'm a hardworking America needs me. So it's, it's I, I, and, you know, if I can, if I can achieve what I achieve, achieving papers, right. it's just a matter of legal, legal process. You know what I mean? And, and money talks. So you can hire the best lawyers. You just have to work hard. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I could have given you a different way. It would have been easier. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> uh, sorry, I can't what give is, credit for that. <laughs> so talking about the easy way versus the hard way, what yeah. what's your favorite thing about being, and I'm going to say, do this in like quotation marks or like air quotes, like being Caesar Milan. What's one of the really big surprising upsides, like the best things about it? And then what's one of the hardest things about it? No, the, the, it's, at this point, it's just great things, honestly. Uh, it's nothing downside, uh, uh, especially after COVID. You know what I mean? It's, it's something shift in, in the whole entire world. That is, it's hard for you to say that it's something bad about who you are. Regret pause, yeah. But right now, where I am in my life, uh, um, the greatest thing about being me is that I am living my pursuit of happiness. You know, the great thing about being me is I am in love with what I do and how I live. And the great thing about me is I, I, I live to the fullest. So I get, you know, I get to live... I get to finance my life the way I want to live it. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. You know, you yeah. know what I mean? The way I want to, who I want to live it, where I want to live it. Uh, I have a beautiful ranch that is magical, 43 acres. And I'm, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, it's just living, a, living, a, living my the dream. dream. Right. You're yeah. living the dream and living your specific dream and then probably beyond. Do you sometimes feel like you have to pinch yourself? Like, I can't believe, even though I knew this was going to happen, sort of, it's happened beyond my dreams. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, no, no. I'm, I'm waiting for one specific moment to pinch myself. What? Well, it's that completion. I want, I want to complete myself. As uh, great with, great with uh, Earth, great with universe, but I also want to be great with with uh, humankind. I I I, I'm, I listen. I I'm not gonna try to make myself better. I'm just I just have a great life with nature, and and I'm here because universal God has allowed me or or listened to me. I say I want to be the best of training in the world. That's a universe conversation. That's call it fate, call it whatever you want to call it, you know. But I, that means I have that connection. I want to have that same connection with, with yeah, with a female. You know, to hide out, you know, as whoever. I do want to have like, like the way I have it with Earth, the way I have it with God. I want to have it with a woman. So I'm removing all the crap that was put into me so I can have it. I'm glad they didn't put crap um, for Mother Earth and, and God. I'm glad, right? Because I, I don't have any toxic between Earth, which is animals, and God, which is uh, what Tony Robbins called the uh, power of intention, right? So it's, I have a direct connection to Earth or to God, but I don't have the same with a female woman. Right, so you're still working woman. on that. You're yeah, still like shifting. Myself. Oh my God, I'm not so simple profound with a woman. So you I feel like you're in the process, like you're on your yes. way, but that you're not quite there, that there are things that still need to happen? Yes, yes, it's bad habits, bad, ha bad habit being taught to me since I was little. I'm from Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico. You know, so it's, 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 not a, it's not a healthy place for kids to learn about women. It's not. 
It's, it's just not. It's, it's so not. what are some of the things that you know that you still have in there that you're trying to get rid of and shed? Insecurity, um, frustration, and, and just bring in, bring in the knowledge. Like I want to know the nose I see ears. I want to know the, you know, how to keep trust, respect, love. You know what I mean? Like, like the natural without me thinking. But right now I have to like step one, step two, step three, because I'm, re- I'm reprogramming myself. You know what I mean? And, and, and I was born, I think all children are born perfect. And, but environment and parents and society reprogram you in a way, you know, even, even, even religion is something that you didn't choose. It was put into you. You know what I mean? What you're going to learn? If this is math. This is science. This is whatever. Yeah. So all of that starts shaping your whole entire perception and, and, uh, and the way you relate and connect and communicate, you know? So I'm changing all of that. And of course, uh, as I change, I also teach it because that's the fastest way to rehabilitate is, is you learn it, you give it, 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 you learn it until it becomes what you follow, what you believe, you know, what you breathe. I want to heal as well as want to be a healer. I want to learn as well as want to teach it. I want to build myself as well as I build the world. You know, so, yeah. because my, the way I think is always about helping others, a pack oriented being so right now my 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 mission is better humans better planet it used to be a trained humans rehabilitate dogs so now it's better humans better planet see it so even that capture it tells you what what my entire self is doing i go to sleep that way i wake up that way i breathe that way (laughs) everything is better humans better planet but to do that i have to become that Right. So what do you do? What's your process? Like you mentioned Tony Robbins. Do you read <clears throat> books or do you like, do you have a kind of like a spiritual coach of some kind or like, what do you do? Well, listen, uh, I have a instinctual coach, a spiritual coach, emotional coach, and that's, that's nature. You know, that for me, like, okay, I never had a, a, a ostrich. So I'll go get an ostrich. I never had a, a kangaroo. So I go get a kangaroo. So I never had a zebra. I'm going to go get a zebra. You see it? Because that gives you access to elevate your instincts, your spirituality, and your love. You see, that's, that to me, that's how I do it. For some people, they go see, you know, Tony Robbins. They go see Oprah. They go see Deepak Chopra. You know, <clears throat> uh, just humans who can give you access to that. For me, it's animals. You know, for me, my gurus are animals. My chamanes are animals. You know, my chief, uh, my sacred uh, wisdom uh, givers are animals. So they do talk, you know, and I, and I know how to listen and I know how to connect and I know how to feel. And, and it's, it is my truth. Yeah. Okay. Question. If there was a movie made about you, who would you like to play you? Who? Oh. You know what? The the one I really love, <clears throat> but it's too old to play me. But I love his energy and and how serious he is. Because I'm I, I'm a very serious person when it comes to uh, execute something. And Al Pacino has that serious execute. Um, it's live or die. You know what I mean? Like he goes into, into that place. It's, I am who I say I am. <laughs> I just, well, obviously he's a little too old, uh, but that energy, I'm looking for that energy. And the only, the only one I see my energy in is Al Pacino. Robert De Niro is amazing. And, and then still watching is amazing. Then still watching is amazing. And energy, as an, I'm looking at it as an energy. Who do yeah. I, who is my energy? Or if, if I'm going to join a pack, who do I join a pack with? I would choose Al Pacino. Yeah, yeah. I you know see I mean? that. Right. I know he needs to like uh, go back in time a little bit so that he yeah, can yeah, yeah, that you, he would just execute 
what what a, what an immigrant feels uh, when I felt when I was at, at the border, when I felt when I was uh, out in the streets, he's going to do it. I see myself in him as an energy, like serious. We'd rather die than do it wrong. You know, he's like, he, he'd rather die than do it wrong. So let's say he was, let's just pretend that he gets the role and he's young enough to play you and you're there as a consultant. What would you tell him about how to play you or what to convey? What is the seriousness of how bad the planet is and how important it is to humble yourself uh, so you can repair it? A dog is just is, is an exhibition of how bad the planet is. We have, you know, um, global warming. We have a pollution in the oceans. We have animals being killed. You know, we have, uh, it, it's just, uh, so it's, it's how he conveys that. That's what I would love because he, his, his mastery of, of doing it on screen will accelerate what I've been doing for 20 years. You know what I mean? Just to hear Al Pacino saying, you know, it's not the dog, it's the human behind the dog. <laughs> it's not the planet, it's the humans. You know what I mean? Better humans, better planet. We, gotta, we have to live a natural, simple, profound. Like the way he conveys and, and the way we love him and the screams, that just, it's like a virus. <laughs> that would be, by the way, you'd be pinching yourself then, I think, yeah, right? Can like, you imagine? Oh my God, he did it. Uh, he did it. It's like, that's it. I'm done. Just watch that movie. That would be so good. You know what I mean? That's it. So it's a movie that will tell you, okay, about this person, but it's the message of this person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And how this kid didn't realize that his dream wasn't about being the best doctor in the world. It was, it was a mission given to him. And he did it. And he's doing it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's a messenger. It's a, it's, a, it's a kid who who thought that he was going to America to meet Lassen Rintin team. You know? It's, it's just his whole how life evolves and when when you when you're chosen to deliver something. Michael Jordan, you know, this is, those are chosen ones. You know what I mean? Those all those people are 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 and they listen to their to their gifts. See, so if you listen to your gift, it's it's available to all of us. It's it's not that I'm I'm a special. No, I just listen to mine. That's it. So that part. So if you listen to your gift, and then you can achieve whatever you want. That's the, that's the message. And at the same time, it's be there for others, achieve your, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you don't have money, fame, and power. All of that stuff, you know, that just keeps you in a very natural, simple, profound. Let's say if you, you're born without clothes, but you can still achieve your dreams. I really think there should be a movie made. I'm just saying. I'm putting it on the record. Did you ever think about yeah, that? Yeah, it will be. It will be. Well, yes, I'm the first Mexican and the first human being who became the dog whisperer. You know what I mean? So as a Latino, it's the first time <laughs> that, that a, a, a Latino has this type of message, you know, like Cesar Chavez, what amazing, amazing message. But this is a worldwide message. You know, it's a Latino who is bringing a message about natural, simple, profound. And, and so that, that adds to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's, hey, normally they don't do that. Normally they play soccer and they do telenovelas and they sing. So that's what we're known, or mariachis, or, or you know, cartels, or things like that. So then, so then you become outside what the world uh, think of your race. Yeah, you know, what I, I mean? really so that think that would be special. a really positive. Yeah, that would be a great thing to be yeah. out there. I mean, you're already yeah. out there, but why not yeah. document it in that way? They, they don't see me as a Latino. They see me as a dog guy. So I'm, I'm even, I'm even separated on my own breed. Wait, but how do you know that? How do you know they don't see you as Mexican, as Latino? <clears throat> because it's not being said in around the world as is the Latino that changed the world or the Latino that that uh, that uh, brought common sense or the, or the Latino who know who taught how to connect, communicate, and have a relationship. You know, it's it's not the hundredth most influential person yet. 
You see so you I mean? would like to see, yeah, you would like more of that recognition then. That would be a good thing because it would really help the Latino community and for the non-Latino community to really see that. For the Latino kids will be very helpful. Yeah, yeah. For the kids around the world will also be helpful. You see it? But as a Latino kid, you need to see your own kind achieving, achieving things, not only soccer, not only football, not only a, a drug cartel, not to be known only as that skill, but to be known as something completely new. Yeah. So they do you know see I mean? you like that, but they don't maybe think of the fact that you're like them. Right. Because they are Correct. seeing you succeed. They are seeing you succeed. And you are a Latino succeeding in this way, in this very unique way. So they are seeing yeah, but it, they, but they're not oh, maybe aware. They're not li- linking the two things together. It's not being it's not being. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it energetically is already there. Mm-hmm. Spiritually is already there. Emotionally is already there. <clears throat> but we also live in a world of uh, labels. And that also influence your reality. Right. So if the world manage uh, uh, or, or speak about uh, the Mexican or the Latino who changed the perception of connection, communication and relationship with dogs. I just invented something worldwide. It's like somebody invented the iPhone. See it? So that I, I brought. And so everybody knows, you know, this particular person who invented the iPhone. Blah, 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 blah. You see it? You know what race he is. So you can we get that message out is. there now? Can we somehow? No, I mean, it happens. I mean, it, it just, it's just the, uh, how the world is prioritized, right? So if this type of person uh, creates or d- does this, d- let's don't promote that part, but do promote the skill. And people are promoting my skill. I mean, I'm, I'm happy and grateful and, and I, I'm not saying anything about it, but as for my race, it will be good for them to hear the one of us change the world. Right. You know, it's like, it's like Despacito, you know, the, the song Despacito? Yes. The whole world played it. Yeah, the whole world. Yeah. The whole world felt it. I love that song. I don't know what it says, but it feels good. <laughs> The celebration of an accomplishment of, of one great thing. Yeah. So, like, what yeah. can I do to make that, to, to you help did. with that? Okay. You just did. You just did. You, you wish, you wish, you're wishing it for it. I'm not, I, I listen, I'm, I'm not that I'm trying to promote that. To me, it's just world change. You see me as a Latino or not. I'm just saying that uh, my Latino kids would absolutely benefit right now yeah. for having an amazing role model who cares about nature when we're talking about the planet. You know what I mean? So no question. there's millions yeah. of Latino kids. You need them to be moving in that direction. But right now they're moved by reggaeton. I love reggaeton. But I also want the same kids who, who, who dance reggaeton to do better with the planet. You know what I mean? Like, let's follow the people they sing for us. Okay. Let's also follow the people who make difference or changes yeah. for us. Yeah. You know? Maybe you I need just, to get together yeah. with like a reggaeton artist or something and then kind of like cross promote or something well, like that. I just that. changed management. I just changed management. And I'm pretty sure that we are going to achieve the cross promotion and the, and the cross collaboration because, you know, dogs are part of the whole world. Uh, musicians own dogs. Politicians own dogs. You know, everybody, I, I don't want to say the word own, uh, live with, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and so, so the dog is, is already in people's homes. The dog is already in people's heart. We just have to make sure that they also speak about it. That the, right, the, the right. Congress people speak about trust, respect, love. That the senators speak about trust, respect, love. You know, calm, confident, love, and joy. Be pack oriented. That's not what the country can do for you. What can you do for the country? Let's talk about that. You know what I mean? Let's make sure that everybody in the house uh, gets their needs met, including dogs, including cats, including birds, because that only makes a great human being out of you. If you treat nature well, uh, that energy is good for everybody. That is the, yes. the purest way to recycle amazingness. 
I have, I have a couple of specific dog questions for you. Can okay. I run them by you? Yeah. One is specific to my dog. So it's Stella and she's a black lab and she's great. There's only one question I have. Why does she always want to get into the garbage can when we're out of the house? And not if we're out for a little bit. She, I feel like she knows if we're out for a long time and we can put a barricade up, but she will still figure out how to get into that garbage can and take things out. She's very food motivated, but this is really the only thing that she ever does that she's not allowed to do. Well, she's not allowed to do when you're out around. She doesn't know that when you're not around. So in her mind, there's food in there. My nose picked it up. I'm going to go and work at it. So it's, she doesn't know that when you're not there that you don't want her to do it. Okay. Yeah. So, so she that, just that, wants the food and there's nothing else to do, so she goes for it? Yeah, and she's not tired enough. Oh, she has not used her nose enough. For her, it's, you know what, I already used my nose. I don't need to, I don't need to find anything else. So if you don't, so if, you, if Stella would do like uh, search and rescue activities or finding certain things, and then the nose will be so tired that they don't do that. Right. So in all fairness, she only does it like once every few weeks it happens. I mean, she gets a lot of exercise and whatever else. Maybe once a month she'll do it. So what, what else can I do that's not a full thing to just stop that from happening? Well, you know, with the, uh, with the new technology that we, we just came out with. So, you know, the Roomba, you know, the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the Roomba is, is, is a technology that helps you soup, uh, clean your house. So you can say, you know what, I don't want, I don't, I want my house to be clean from this time to this time. So this, this new technology, we, we, I'm part of it, it's called Halo. So this is, you know, so the Halo is about, it's about rules, but so when you're there, so when you're there, you can provide the rules, but limitations, right? That's guidance. You, you're guiding uh, you can tell a human, hey, this is the rules, the boundaries, the limitations. So that gives them a sense of knowing how to be in that environment, right? So that's like a halo. You're protecting, you're giving direction, you're giving love. That's your job. You know, body, mind, heart, all of that is a halo. Well, when you're not there, how, how can you reinforce the rules, boundaries, limitations? So when you're there, you can clean the house. You don't need the Roomba. When you're not there, you need the Roomba. You see what I mean? So this is where technology can be helpful to you. Where you're not there or when you go to new places and you want to create boundaries. So that also the technology is you can go to the beach and you can say, I want my dog to be 20, 40 feet away from me. If so, even if I'm not looking, the, the uh, technology will keep your dog inside Halo. At the beach you're talking about. Yes. Okay. That's yeah. Everybody wants, listen, this is the land of the free, but no one is free. Okay. So even dogs, they have a leash law. And many dogs have never seen or touched the beach because their humans are afraid that they will run away. That's why people bring dogs to a dog park because it has fences. Right? But that dog is not really practicing a, a, a healthy, social, animal-free lifestyle. So what, what the technology is going to give you is going to give you access to freedom. But because your human is so disconnected of doing it with energy, body, language, they need technology to help. Like, the, you know, uh, so when you have kids and they're little, you give them a phone so, so you know where they are. So technology helps you know where, you, where your children are. Right. So to know where your dog is and is, it, it, it gives you a peace of mind. That's just knowing where your dog is. And you can check your phone and track just like you can track your kids. So what is this system that you have, the Halo system? Well, it's, it's technology that they communicates uh, to the dog via satellite. Right. Of course, you put it on your phone because the phone is you're going to take your phone. You're just going to. A program, so, so your dog, when you go to the beach, you create a boundary. When you're in the house, you, you have a, a little things that we have this big, it's called beacons. So if, so if you wanna, if you don't want your dog to be, to get closer to here, you just put the beacon right here. And the beacon will keep your dog four, five feet, 10 feet away from it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so your dog will be, have, it will be having a, uh, like an invisible 
uh, halo. That makes you know sense. I mean? Right, right. So for me to help dogs, I have to create uh, a tool that helps me help people achieve rules, boundaries, limitations. Got it. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is something you can do. So you use your phone and you basically set it up wherever you need it. And then it is like an instant halo. Yeah. It's, yeah. And That's you're not cool. related to it. You're not related. The environment is related. So, uh-huh. so then the dog is communicating with the environment. You know, so if a dog goes close to a cactus, he goes there once. Right. After that, he knows that that plant that smells that way has this, this feeling. And that becomes a halo. So it's see, very, it's, it's, it goes along with the instincts. The it goes along with the right nature. Yeah. If you use technology or a tool, even a leash, uh, uh, um, the people who are doing the leash the right way are people in dog shows. So why? with it up at the top of the, of the neck, right? The let, back, let, me right let, mm-hmm. let, let me tell you why. Because number one, leashes are natural. Yes. Yes, it is. No dogs will ever buy a leash. No way. A, a mom of puppies or, 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 or dogs will never go to any store and say, I need leashes for my children. Right? So leash is not natural. So you have to make it natural. How do you make it natural? Well, the people who are doing it right right now, that the whole world can watch right now, is the dog show people. Why? Because they put the leash all the way in the top. What does that leash do all the way in the top? They do many things. They do three things. It removes the nose away from the ground. 60% of the brain is controlled by the nose. Also keeps a very proud position. That's why it's a show, it's a show dog, right? They're, they, they are triggered to be in a very proud position. Number three, you can guide them with two fingers and you can stop them by pulling up. So you can move the brain and stop the brain in less than a second with very little guidance. So nose away from the ground, very proud and very gentle. That's what that leash means. Focus, be proud, and follow. All right, I think we're about ready to wrap up. Yep. Um, did we cover everything that you wanted to? Yeah, it was a good conversation. Did you like it? Was it? The best, it was the best Zoom conversation I had had. Like, I feel like I was with somebody in front of me. That's amazing. I, that yeah. makes, you just made my day by saying that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how technology is not always makes people feel like they're there, but you were, thanks for listening and for being like um, happy to hear what I was, what I have to say and, and remembering, you know, with so much cariño, so much care, you know, and uh, I don't know. It just, it just, I also needed to hear somebody uh, uh, right now in my life. Uh, that is excited to to hear and excited for all my accomplishments and, and admiration. So I appreciate that. Thank you. That was Cesar Milan. To listen to our first talk, just tap the link in today's show notes. For more on Cesar's Halo system, go to halocollar.com. To watch us on YouTube, head over to youtube.com slash really famous. Hit me up on Instagram or Twitter if you haven't already. Please do. I am very chatty with my connections on social media and I would love to add you to the mix. There are links in the show notes or you can just go to your favorite platform and search for Kara Mayer Robinson. And remember, you can shop now for our top dog products at amazon.com slash shop slash really famous. Thanks for hanging out with Caesar Milan and me. Oh, and here's one more fun fact before we wrap. Years ago, Caesar had another really famous guest on his show, Daisy Fuentes. So my son was watching TV recently and he was like, hey, that's Caesar and that's Daisy Fuentes. I'm going to record this for mom. So he did. And I watched it and it was so much fun. Two of my peeps plus a dog. Gotta love it. If you have fun facts or find cool clips that you think I'd be interested in, send them my way. Drop me an email at reallyfamouspodcast at gmail.com. Talk to you soon. 